This morning, we are talking to Stephanie Benenson. Stephanie has created the traveling public art installation, Harbor of Voices. Harbor Voices uses light and recorded narratives to illuminate the ways in which our communities are built upon immigration, that we are all an immigration story. Recently, Stephanie has created, in collaboration with the Cape Ann Museum, the installation projected onto the White Ellery House at Grant Circle. Stephanie, could you talk to us about this installation, how it came about, and the messaging? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you so much for, um, for noticing the project and um, for asking me to talk a little bit about it today. So I would say maybe about three weeks ago, I sent an email to Oliver Barker, who is the director of the Cape Ann Museum, and said that, you know, it would be really great if, um, if we could create a contemporary expression of gratitude and thanks to all of the essential and frontline workers um, of the COVID-19 crisis. And when I launched Harbor Voices in 2017, the Cape Ann Museum, as they are with many organizations on Cape Ann, as you know, um, were an incredible partner for me in, um, in helping to connect me with local schools and people to talk to. Um, the education director, Courtney Richardson, offered um, listening devices uh, for people when they came to City Hall when we had our installation in 2017. And so naturally I thought that I would reach out to the museum and Oliver was just so excited. He um, had already started a uh, campaign for the museum called uh, Gloucester Indoors. And I think you may have noticed that on the facade of the museum they have these um, posters or uh, banners that say Storms Rage and Gloucester Indoors. And those tie into the history of Cape Ann and Gloucester and, the, and they've also been researching um, some of the health crises that Cape Ann has gone through over time and how um, Gloucester has endured. And so he thought that this contemporary expression of gratitude and um, of thanks to our frontline workers fit in nicely with that campaign that they're working on and trying to reach outside of the museum walls to uh, to reach the community while the museum doors are closed. Mm, it's such a great idea. So were you excited when the White Ellery House was chosen as a sort of canvas? Well, so it was interesting because um, so the, as you may have noticed at Grant Circle, the Cape Ann Museum has been renovating their campus that they have there. And they have um, three historic structures. They have the Babson House, the White Ellery House and its barn. And they're also developing um, a more contemporary building that will serve as housing for their um, art storage, but then also a contemporary space. And I think the goal is that they want to eventually have more contemporary art projects um, at that space. And so driving into Cape Ann and going around the Rotary, the first thing you notice is that beautiful barn that has recently been restored. Um, and the idea occurred to me that, you know, if that barn, because it's situated so nicely, um, that the barn could function as a billboard um, in a way that people could witness the work as they're driving by, driving to and from Addison Gilbert, driving home, or driving through all parts of Cape Ann. Um, and it would be a great way for people to see a message, but not create a public space where people will linger or try to attend an art um, opening, which is, as a public artist, something that, um, you know, I have to think a lot about now. Right, right. We don't want groups. Yes. So do you want to talk a just a little bit about um, how you see this messaging connecting to your message in Harbor Voices? Sure. Um, so for the most part, Harbor Voices has created laser and sound installations where we capture stories of immigration and origin in multiple languages to express the idea that over the course of history, um, that people, regardless of whether they or not they identify their stories of their families and their history as immigration stories, that, that almost everyone has, with the exception of Native Americans, um, a story of how they arrived to this country. Um, and they may have to look back generations and generations to find them, but there are ancestral stories and there are recent stories, and we can find commonalities between them. And when I was working on the Gloucester piece in 2017, um, I worked very closely with some teachers at Gloucester High School and um, historical societies and local nonprofits. 
And it occurred to me that when we're thanking essential workers and frontline workers, many artists today are, are expressing that graphically, which um, as we all know, art and, and sometimes drawings or uh, can be multilingual just in the fact that they're depictions of a face or of hands clapping. I know we've all seen the hands clapping um, gifts that are out there. So um, a way for me to try to find uh, a multilingual approach to thanking the essential and frontline workers. So I reached back to some of the teachers that I worked with um, and the ESOL coordinator at Wellspring um, and asked, you know, if we were to make a multilingual thanks, message of thanks, what languages are, you know, the top four, or the top five that you see in your classes? And um, they both actually had the same list. Um, and so we created the work from there. That's beautiful. So can you name the languages that the, uh, the message is? Sure, different? absolutely. So the message says, thank you, frontline heroes. And it's in Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and English. Beautiful. And this evening, I think there will be a rally, right? Yeah. So more an, another way of uh, the community joining, participating in this public art. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. So first, I'd, I'd like to say that this, so this project is uh, three arts nonprofits coming together, um, donating time, donate, donating uh, projection rentals, uh, donating space like the Cape Ann Museum. And so I'm working with uh, Lumen Arts, which is a, a Gloucester based uh, projection um, company and art space nonprofit. And so uh, we'll, I will be there with Lumen Arts and um, also uh, Oliver Barker from the Cape Ann Museum. And the chair of the board of the Cape Ann Museum, Charles Esdale, has started this group of people that are coming. They're meeting at 8.30 at O'Malley School tonight. And they're going to create a line of cars. And the line of cars is going to drive from O'Malley to the Rotary, go around Grant Circle once, I think, or maybe twice, and then pass the artwork and go back. And they're encouraging, I think the, the, the rally that he's created, that's been created is, um, is it's really special because we didn't, we made this a pop-up event. We didn't really publicize it a lot ahead of time. We said, you know, we don't want large groups of people to gather at the site, but we noticed the first two nights that it started, um, people were driving by and honking their horns, ambulances, fire, fire trucks, all honking their horns as they were making their rounds um, during the evening. And so it kind of started this idea of, you know, if people are just driving by and honking their horns, let's let people have an opportunity to really publicly show their support for the frontline heroes and say that, you know, we see you and we appreciate you. Um, it's in my mind, you know, I have a friend that lives in Brooklyn and every night she opens her window and she's with her cowbell out the window for the frontline heroes. And I think that this is an iteration of that. I think it will be really special. That's wonderful. So, yeah. so what does the actual display consist of? Like, is, is it one projector? How many are lights installed? What's going on over there? Sure. So there's, um, there's one projector and the projector is projecting frontline heroes um, in, you know, two words stacked on two words. And then it, it fades, I think every four seconds, it fades into another language and then it comes and the next language comes up and then it fades into the next language. And we worked, we worked for a little while to try to figure out exactly what the timing should be because we wanted it to be fast enough so that if someone's driving around the rotary and their language isn't seen, that you know, by the time they get from one side of the rotary around, that maybe they notice the languages are shifting, but not that it lingers too long on one language so that they think, oh, this message doesn't apply to me or I don't understand what this, what this message is because I don't speak that language. Yeah. Well, and I also want to know, um, how did you settle on a font? <laughs> well, so luckily, Harbor Voices is a public art collective. And so we've had a lot of different artists working on projects with us um, since our inception. And one of the artists that we've been working with, who is one of my best friends from when I went to the Rhode Island School of Design, um, happens to be a she, in her previous life, she now works for an arts nonprofit, was a, um, a book cover designer. And so we worked together for a long time trying to decide, you know, how big we wanted the letters to be. We wanted it to feel like um, it had a presence um, and that you could read it 
you know, from, from distances far away. Uh, and, you know, without a serif, we wanted it to look contemporary. So we worked pretty hard on that. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> You're noticing. Yeah. It's really cool. That's yeah. important. Hey, Heather, that's important. It I is important. And, and <laughs> I will say, um, you know, like most artists, everything that we do is on the shoulder of the artist that came before us. And I think you can see that across Cape Ann's history in the arts. And um, for me, in with working in contemporary art, you know, I've always loved the work of Jenny Holzer, who does projection art. And I've always loved the work of Superflex Studio that does these interactive and recently more text-based art. So, um, so, you know, there are really great visual examples out there for us to work from. Mm. I want, are there any plans to uh, for maybe subsequent projections there at the White Ellery House or other spots in Cape Ann? Oh, I think, I think the Cape Ann Museum has a lot in store and I think Luminarts has a lot in store as well. They have, um, they're working on a light up the night campaign where they're doing these pop-up projections um, all around Cape Ann. And um, so I think that there's a lot, but I know that the Cape Ann Museum has a lot to share on that campus once some of these social distancing got, um, restrictions um, subside. Mm -hmm. And how long is this installation supposed to last at the Rotary? Uh, tonight's the last night. Okay. Yeah, so it was last week. We had three nights in a row, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we were rained out on Friday night, which was when we decided to reschedule for this Thursday because tonight, because the weather's going to be so nice. Um, we, uh, that's when the, the idea for the pop-up rally came to, came to mind. Very cool. Well, it's such a great idea because really when we're completely stuck with things to do and all the games have been played, we go for a drive, right? Yes. So, uh, it's just these, uh, I hope there are more installations like this. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for talking to us and for creating this project. It's really, I think it's brought a lot of different parts of the community together. Thank okay. you. And we look forward to more. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. All right, we'll see you tonight. Okay. Take care. Bye.